Uh, aloha and how you doing? Gorgo the Techs are here and welcome to Hibachi Talk. Please grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair and join us for another exciting 30 minutes of Tech Talk. I have my guest today, Jarrett. How you doing? Thanks for Gruget. having me. I keep wanting to say Gruget. It's been pronounced Gruget many times. I keep wanting to say it. So, and you're with Hawaii Dialogics Telecom. We're going yes, to talk, sir. We're going to talk about the uh, telecom industry in Hawaii here. Yes, sir. And, boy, that could go on forever and ever. Yeah. So, and we get we like to little, know a little bit our, about our guests. But now I just found that you're out, you're a Cleveland Indian fan. I'm a huge Cleveland Indians fan. So this has been a very short show. Nice talking to you all. We'll see you again next week. So as you can see, I've been following the Blue Jays since the very first show, and I just want you know. And here we are. Yes. We're, we're there, and we have our first game. This afternoon. Two o'clock in an hour. <laughs> first pitch. <laughs> oh, I can hardly ALCS. wait. ALCS. <laughs> it's hardly wait. It's going to be the Blue Jays and Chicago in the... Ooh, uh, I don't know. In, yeah, I think, I think so. Anyway, uh, Jared, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Know, you. And we'd like to learn a little bit about our guests and so on. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, um, went to HPU. I've been in Hawaii about 20 years. Um, actually, uh, a funny story. Um, I know we've you know met at HPU events and yep, alumni yep, events and whatnot, yep. but uh, actually uh, came to Hawaii sight unseen, and um, uh, had enough money for my first semester of college. Uh, my mom, who's just a, a doll, um, saved up uh, some some money. We we grew up pretty meager means and bought some uh, um, education bonds. And she we had just wow. enough for my first semester. Got off the plane. Registered, went in, and uh, been here almost 20 years. And so you went to HPU? Yeah, went to HPU. Alum? There you go. There we yeah. go again. Andrew Landing is alum, too, our, my co-host. And he's not here, by the way, in case you just noticed. Um, he's off traveling, um, espousing the world of um, security. So okay, yeah, that's what he does. So he does that He does that well. So you came here, and did, you graduated from HPU. Yep. So you had to get a job. I did. I did. I got a job, and one of my first just pretty much right out of college, went to work at a company called Summit Communications, which, okay. was, a, which was a dial tone provider, right. um, what at that time they called a shared tenant services. Okay. So they, they no, put they're a, not around it, are they? No, no, they actually uh, went through a, um, a bankruptcy in 2003, and they were sold, or 2002, and they were sold in 2003. Okay. And that's where I just kept kept running with it. Okay, so Summit kind of went out of business. So I got a, it's a great segue. Yeah. I, I love how segues work. So we have this segment called You Know Got One Tech Job. Okay. So I may have a reason why Summit went out of community, went out of business. Okay. I got a shot here. We have this, we find these pictures all around. You Know Got One Tech Job. Now zoom in on this guy. Look at that cable plant. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> How'd you like to manage that puppy? Oh my gosh. I know. And there's a bunch of them around. But this is not in Hawaii though. Yeah. But, uh, but we, I have a pictures of Hawaii where there's some trees like that. Well, go to Mapunapuna and go to, uh, you know, near the airport and you kind of get down or some of the uh, kind of mid streets of Kaka'ako. Right. And uh, it's it's pretty hairy. It's, yeah, I know. You sit there and you go, welcome to Hawaii, the only third world country in the United States. Yeah. It's, it's only blocks too, right in the middle of the metropolis. It's just there. It's just there. Metropolis. Now you, you have an interesting, you have, you, you have an interesting background. So you were at Summit Communications. Yes, yeah, so I was at Summit Communications. Uh, Summit Communications at that time sold to a company out of uh, Houston, Texas that was called Direct Telephone Company. Okay, I remember that. And they were doing prepaid, or not, I'm sorry, not prepaid. Well, they were doing prepaid dial tone and unbundled network element. So they're okay. selling uh, voice circuits off of Verizon's network. Um, Long story short, uh, I put together a group, bought it in 2004, okay. and then uh, Stephen Hahn, who you I know from Dialogics, yep. we uh, merged our organizations together in 2009, okay. and uh, the, rest is, the rest is history. So, We've been just going nuts since then, and uh, got capitalized in uh, 2014, right. uh, so we, we achieved that, and since then we've just been going crazy. So, and so this is a cool story, because you're a local firm. You know, yeah. you're, you're definitely grassroots when you fly in oh, and yeah. go to school and, and so on. So, what, but what's it like? Tell, tell me, about, what do you think of the tele, telecommunications landscape in Hawaii? What's it like here? Well, okay, so... Uh, why do you want to do it? I don't know. Do you, you said we only have 30 minutes, right? <laughs> I know, it's a little so, short. So, uh, keeping it as short as possible, um, it's a great opportunity for people like us because, okay. you know, Hawaii is really a small town, and I think that's why... Uh, Hawaii's been so good to me. It's been so such a comfortable place for me because I'm from a small town in Oregon, right? Okay. A really small town. So even though it's a big city, it operates like a small town, and you know there's opportunity to push innovation. Now, in small towns, you typically have the incumbents that kind of do things as they see fit. <laughs> uh, their way. Yeah, their way. Their way or and the highway. <laughs> I would like to think that that we have helped, you know 
at least to some degree push some of the the innovation that happened right. as far as like internet speeds and fiber deployments. You know, we were Hawaii's first one gig internet provider for uh, residential customers. Right. And uh, just a few months after that, Hawaiian Tel made their announcement. Right. So I mean, I know everyone kind of has it on the roadmap, but when somebody's really pushing for faster speeds, and better prices, and flexibility, and you know, so often um, I, I won't name any names, but, but you know, we're a we're a customer too, right? Right. So uh, internet comes into Hawaii, and then you know, we disperse it from there, right? right? So we buy from people too. Right. And uh, customer service isn't the... Uh, some people are good at it and some people are not so good at it. I think some companies are just so big, yeah. you know? They're just so big that uh, no matter how hard they try or they don't, or they just decide not to try it, you know? So explain what it is that you're, you're what, what you do, you know, what you, what you do. Sure. Like what you, what, so, you know, you've got, you're not a phone company, are you? Or are you yeah, so company? we're, we're so. an internet service provider okay. and licensed public utility. So we okay. are a phone company. Okay. So, uh, but just like anything else, you know, you have your, your smartphone. The phone part of your iPhone or your Android is an app. Right? Right. So voice is, is just one of the many apps that we sell on top of our bandwidth. So right. we deliver, um, we try to deliver the fastest, most affordable internet throughout Hawaii. So, okay, so your, your primary focus is providing high-speed internet That's services right. to businesses and residential or just one, or how's that work? Businesses and then residential high-rise buildings. Oh, oh. So typically the multi-tenant environment. Okay, so you'll go into a, a, a an office building and, and talk to the owner of the building or the building manager. I'm looking at office and, and say, okay, we can look at, we want to talk to the tenants in there. Well, I can give you a couple examples. Okay. So we do we do business customers just all over the state, right? Okay. So just, um, but from a residential perspective, okay. we'll go into uh, the AOAO and uh, right. say one of our, one of the largest buildings that we have, actually the largest condominium in Hawaii is the Kukui Plaza. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. So that's right. a bill. So we come in and, and we show them what we want to provide their tenants and offer for their services right. or offer our services to those tenants and then they, they allow us to come in and sell and we bring our equipment. Um, the way that internet works, which uh, um, as far as speeds are concerned, is distance plays a huge role. Okay. So if you have a central office and your apartment is far from the central office, it's very difficult for you to get really good internet speeds because it has to travel that distance, right? So that's why some buildings struggle. So what we do is we bring our network to the building. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that distance. So we you're build a our node network, in the building. Node in the building, okay. build it in there, bring you know multiple gigabits of internet, and right. we pass through there, we add it to our network, okay. uh, and we go from there. So that's the residential side, and then uh, like we did with the Scheidler Group, Okay. Um, we, uh, we did a deal with the Shiler Group where we installed 100% uh, of their tenants with fiber-based internet services, which they give 10 megs complimentary to all their tenants, which is awesome. Wow. Symmetrical. So that, so that so symmetrical being up and down. That's right. And so, so that gives them an edge over saying another Caldwell Banker building, I'm just picking up names because I don't know. No, no that's 100%. And say... Um, well, that's not offered in their package that they're giving to the potential office. Uh, that's right. They've got the complimentary bandwidth. But imagine, I mean, you know, Gordon, you're, I mean, you, you know how valuable high-speed internet is. Yeah, tell me about <laughs> it. Um, they'll, they'll go to also, they'll go to, uh, say, a full-floor tenant looking to possibly move in and say, hey, we'll throw in a 100 meg circuit or a gig or whatever it may be right. uh, in your lease to help entice them um, and help them save money that way, too. Yeah, so. Wow. It's really good. So they've equated, um, they really use it, they build it into the square footage value. That's really, really cool. Okay, and is, is that, so is that your, your hyperfiber? Is that's that, right. Is that, so that's what it's called. You call it your hyperfiber. Yeah, our hyperfiber network is when we have on-net buildings, both residential and um, commercial. Okay. So we bring our node into the building, like you said. Right. We deliver fiber through the building, and uh, that's hyperfiber. Now, and then, so so I'm just trying to make it so the layperson can understand sure. what's happening here. So, so... You're, you're a public utility regulated, I quote unquote, phone company. So yeah, it's a competitive com local exchange, exchange carrier. So yeah. you're a local exchange carrier, so you can compete with the big guys. Yes, sir. And, um, and then you, to get out to everybody around the world, you have to essentially connect somewhere. Yes. And so where's that central kind of piece? We're at DR Fortress. Okay, so you're, oh, well, we've had Fred Rohde on the show. So yeah, Fred's Fred has great. been on the show at DR Fortress. So we back, go back to the, I love this stuff, right? How yeah. it all interwinds. Oh, right? yeah, for the sure. The importance of DR Fortress and what they provide, because you're not the only guy there. Oh, yeah, Phone for sure. carrier. There are other phone carriers there yep. that all have to interconnect. Yes. And so that's how 
it would happen. Now, my next question would be like, well, how do you, you, you know, you've got to compete in other spaces because they're all bundling stuff now. That's they're right. Bundling, you know, I can get my phone, I can get high speed internet, and now I can get television. Yes. You know, or, you know I won't even call it television, whatever the video, I'll call it video. You know, you get video services and so on. So are you playing in that space or are you going to go into that space or what's the thought? So on the residential side, the, uh, the video is obviously a real opportunity, right? right. Um, you've got your incumbent who's been around forever in Oceanic and you have Hawaiian Telecom who has been working to take some of their market share. Right. But we have thousands of residential customers. Okay. So that's a need that we need to fill. So we definitely... Um, look at that from every direction, how best to fill that gap and that need on our own network. On your own network. And okay. then from a business perspective, uh, bundling, you're 100% right. I mean, we have all of our voice, or, you know, voice over IP, host of voice services. But then we have a ton of cloud services that we've, that we've really launched over the last you know, 18 months. And that's uh, managed security, storage and backup, you okay. know, business continuity, uh, VDI, you know, virtual, virtual desktops. Desktop, right. um, yeah, so I mean, we're uh, our managed Wi-Fi, which okay. is great. Which, yeah. which I'm sure we'll talk about. We're going to talk about, we're gonna talk yeah. about that. That, yeah, that was that was that was one of the coups of all coups. I think I saw in this yeah. when you guys pulled that off. So 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 um, now you're going into the condos. You're going into the the office spaces. You're offering these bundled services. I mean, I don't subscribe that much to the television services because mm -hmm. I use you know Netflix or. Um, I get it off my internet service provider, right? Of course. And that's why high-speed internet is important to me. I use my, you know, my Amazon or my uh, Apple device or yep. whatever. I'm using Fire Stick and everything. Those, those are my vehicles that I use to get my video. I really don't care about, you know, the bundle I get from whether it be Oceanic or or Hawaiian Telecom. It doesn't matter that much to me as long as I've got high-speed internet. Yeah, that, that's over the top, right? The over-the-top OTT services. Okay. And we love that because, you know, we, let's say a, a customer signs up for one gig of internet service, which is $125, by the way. So yeah, it's one, that's cool. awesome price. Residential symmetrical one gig. Okay. I remember when that was so much money. Yeah, it was like impossible, right, to yeah. get that. So, but I'm the same way. I mean, I've, I've got my Amazon Fire. I've got my Roku. I've got a seven-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. So they've okay. got their Roku in their room okay. when they need to fire it up. And it's, it's Amazon Prime and, right. you know, Netflix and Hulu and yeah. NFL Sunday Ticket. Wow. So I subscribe yeah, I, to that. Aren't we there? Yep. Yeah, so, so it's, uh, yeah, it, I, I'm the same way. I'm all about over-the-top services. All right, cool. Well, guess what? We, it's, we, take a, we take a break. Sure. And you haven't met Angus yet. So I have Angus not, is, have Angus, yeah, Angus is going to come oh, up. Oh, I've he's heard gonna, about Angus. He's going to try and fill in for Andrew and do a security segment, which is going to be a piece of work I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, Angus will be back okay. in about a minute, and uh, so will we. So uh, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Richard Emery. I'm the host of Condo Insider. You know, associations are really prominent here in the state of Hawaii. And they have a lot of complex issues with elected boards of directors, repairing and maintaining the building, how to make it quiet enjoyment to live there. So our show tackles the issues of living with an association by bringing in experts on various topics from owner's rights to association living, to reserve studies, to pipe repair, to the new law regarding overtime. You will find it very useful in living in an association as well as if you serve on a board of directors of learning all the risks and rewards of living in an association. We hope you can join us every Thursday at 3 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for E Hanakako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on E Hanakako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha! 
How you doing there, lads and lassies? Okay, Mega Hibashi Talk. I'm coming in here for Drew, so I got a wee security movement for you. So get ready for this. You know the Office of Civil Rights, it's called OCR. You know, it's issued new guidance in connecting with uh, increased malicious cyber attacks in healthcare. You know, we told you before that, you know, healthcare records are, are worth a ton of money. And you know me and my money, I like to save my money. You know, unless, you know, so the thing that's made it really interesting, uh, unless the covered entity or business associate can demonstrate that there is low probability of a data breach, then they're considered to be guilty already, that a breach has already occurred. So, you know, and interesting that, you know, recently there's been 4,000 daily ransom attacks, nearly in 2016, which are 300% from 2015. Anyway, so that's my wee security minute that I'm putting in there for, for Andrew. You know, get, watch out, Andrew, because you may lose your job if I keep this, so doing a great job on this. Anyway, there's another cool thing. You know, I'm a gadget guy, and I just love these gadgets. So, now, I didn't have diabetes, but, you know, these are the diabetes uh, insulin pumps. They're really cool kind of things. But guess what? They now found out that it can be hacked. Johnson & Johnson announced just the other day there that their, their insulin pumps can be hacked. Now, I didn't know what you're going to do when you hack it. But anyway, it's something to be aware of, and so watch out. So if any of you are one of these devices, please make sure that you go out and do the software upgrade that they're putting out on the web there at Johnson & Johnson. Anyway, that's what I have. But I have, a, I have a wee question for our guest. You know, I'm a wee guy. A wee, not very big. That's what wee means. All right. So I'm a wee guy. And so, you know, you come into the islands, and you go, in, you go up against the big guys. That's right. Like the hotels. You know, those are the big, the, the big blahs out there, right? What happened to you, the idea to go against the big guys? That's a good question, Angus. I um, nice to meet you, Angus. I find out <laughs> hey, so, so much Mr. about you. So Mr. Grugier, Grugier, right? <laughs> Yeah, so we, uh, we uh, uh, saw a um, real opportunity to um, uh, push innovation. And, you know, we're just, we're, we're not telecom guys, right? I'm not a telecom guy. But uh, I know what services I like to use. Uh, I know what we're looking for. I know as a business owner the things that made doing business difficult for us. And a lot of that was expensive and slow connectivity. So uh, we made a conscious decision and led by uh, Stephen Hahn, our CTO, to uh, build our own network. And that really, we said, look, we need good internet. We want good internet. We want it for a home. We want it for our friends, our family. So let's do it. And then it just grew from there. So we just, just grassroots it. So I'm so I'm going to come back and hit you with another question on top of that. Sure. So so tell me what what is the HDT Hawaii Dialogics Telecom mm -hmm. network? What does that consist of? Because it's got to be pretty substantial in size, investment, and those kinds. Yeah, of things. definitely. Uh, what's exciting about it is it continues to grow, right? So if you can just imagine like a small ring, right? So we started with a, a small ring of say uh, that covered downtown. Right. Okay. And then we grow out and then all of a sudden it's Punahou and Kalihi and then it's, or excuse me, Kaka'ako and Kalihi and then it's Punahou and then it's Waikiki and then it grows west. So it just keeps growing uh, organically and get, getting bigger and bigger the more customers we add okay. and the more buildings we add, the more areas we add service to. Um, and it's exciting. I mean, we, we literally had a, a, a partner's call today where we were talking about um, our rapid expansion um, westward, which we have a lot of customers there, but... Um, Westward, you mean as in Kapolei? Yeah, to Kapolei. Okay. So we have Kapolei is on our network, but there's a, a lot, not everything, but a lot in between that's kind of, you know, kind of, we, you know, this part of Waipahu and this part of Pearl City, but then there's a gap. So we're talking about our expansion to cover that whole area. Cover that whole... And it's exciting because it's just going to keep keep going until the island's covered, which is great. So let me give you a piece. This is going to be a business meeting. Okay. I'm going to write it off. I'm going to give you a piece of, piece of advice. Yes, or something please. That, you know. So in, in, I was involved in the infrastructure design and yes. development in Copple A. The uh, Kamakila Boulevard, the main mm -hmm. drag, and the, some of the main side streets that go into the commercial side. Yes. That, um, the way that was built and provisioned is as a non-exclusive right to use. So Hawaiian Telecom does not own that conduit system. They have the non-exclusive right to use that system. So anyone that wants to go into the main thoroughfare mm -hmm. or those side thoroughfares just has to talk to Campbell Estate and cut a deal with them. That's really interesting. So we, we do have our pole attachment and conduit rights with Hawaiian Telecom, but I did not know that um, outside of that, outside of the main drag, that it was with Campbell yeah. Estates. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, so the James Campbell Company, which is yeah. what they are now, I can put you in contact with, with their I'm in. person up there. And then so you've got, you'll, you'll be able to go and not, not have to deal with the big guys and say, I want to pull some fiber down these. You know, show us your, yeah. your grid, and I want to pull some fiber down this. And you just negotiate, negotiate a deal with them. Yeah, that's great. You know, not, you know, and so and they're not out there pounding the pavement selling that stuff. So I'll just go to... 
go to their CEO and say, hey, Tim, I got a customer. Yeah, I would love that introduction. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, you look at the, the kind of the landscape of internet um, nationwide, you see Google is in the service provider realm. Right. And uh, one of the things that they're having such a hard time with is, is building their network because of the pole attachment conduit rights. And even if they get it, it's just so hard because the carrier that would lease the space to them or the utility pole doesn't want them there. Right. So they have to do it, but they make it long process and they make it incredibly difficult. You can read about uh, you know Google and AT&T battling, uh, AT battling all the time. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I tried when I was the CIO for the city, as you know, I tried so hard to enable you guys to get into the roads and get on yeah. the... Did you get to experience the wonders of the Joint Pole Committee? No. Oh, well, you, so far you have not left no. out. The, the Joint Pole <laughs> yeah, Committee? committee. Oh, sometimes wow, I they never... will get, if you try to get on a poll, sometimes they will get involved. They're an unregulated, non-legislatively approved group of employees that work for the carriers who decide who can and cannot get on the poll and when. Wow. Yeah, and they, I, my standard line, and I was with the city trying to put stuff up for the citizen at no cost. Yeah, I, was, I had people donating it, and the joint poll committee went, "Oh no, it's too heavy. It's going to break the poll. The poll's going to fall down." Yeah. Now, if you want to put in new poles or go underground for the next ten miles, we'll let you do it yeah. on your dime. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, the, you don't make money. You can't. You can't. There's no way those those things pencil out. Nobody said it was easy. Yeah, I know. It's hard. <laughs> you, you going up against these big guys is pretty. It's pretty incredible. So, but um, you know, time goes so fast. But I want to talk about your Kakaako story because that's yeah. that's a great story. You know how you you went in there and. Did you know there was going to be 6,600 condos built in the Kaka'ako area well, when you did this? Yeah, well, I mean, what was great about it is, um, so we were actually hired by Commitment Schools, okay. right? So they brought us in, they had right. their vision for our Kaka'ako, which is really great. Yep. Uh, by the way, night market tomorrow night, so people can come, you know, check it out uh, down at well, Salt. Right. Yeah, yep. they've used our free Wi-Fi and the whole deal. But so what, this is what I thought was really innovative, and we got lucky, is this is kind of, we're, we're known for being really flexible, right? So. With Kamehameha School's development of Arkakaako, they had to be flexible because, you know, you have a high-rise going up here and it's going to be under construction for a while. Right. And if you build a Wi-Fi network and you run, say, fiber only to certain locations and, and then you start building, you have to tear it down, you lose that infrastructure. Right. So what we built was a flexible, movable, moldable infrastructure where we could move things around during construction and then reposition them with no loss of infrastructure. Mm. So it was really cool. So our network is actually kind of always evolving as the construction goes on. You know, Salt was just a warehouse. Right. Now it's an open air market. And right. they put that parking garage in. You know, none of that existed before. So we couldn't just put infrastructure and have them pay for it on old buildings and then have the building torn down and then Kamehameha Schools is paying for the same thing again. Um, and I think that's what helped us win that contract because we showed them that we could grow and mold and be flexible with them. And it's cool. It's still one of the fastest um, free neighborhood Wi-Fi networks um, in the country. See, that's a cool thing. It's a free neighborhood Wi-Fi. And you know how hard I tried to do, you know, know the Waikiki. Wi-Fi. Uh, with, yeah. well, uh, and then I had, I had Chinatown with Kukua Wireless. I started oh, yeah. that. We did that kind of thing. And just the battle that went on. So I think the, the brilliance of this is the Kamehameha Schools and what mm -hmm. they were able to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the vision with you to mm -hmm. take this thing and then slowly build out this this Wi-Fi. But again, coming back to the fact that now with 6,600 units coming in there, plus those condos, you must be knocking on the door of the, every developer, every AO, AOAO that's not even started up yet to see how you can get into the Oh, buildings. sure. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, that's what we do. And it's cool because it started when, um, you know, our Kaka'ako was just coming together. And, you know, now our Wi-Fi network expands over to uh, Restaurant Row right. and Waterfront. And we're right. at Makers and Tasters just around the corner, right? right. So Makers and Tasters has free Wi-Fi all the time for Eat the Street and all of that. So it's really growing and expanding. And what the funniest thing about this network, Gordon, is uh, Pokemon Go. Everybody <laughs> loves Pokemon Go. We were Girl. talking about that. So I, I live in Kakaako as well. So you, you walk down at night in Kakaako. I mean, it could be 11.30 at night on a Friday, and there are hundreds, hundreds of people using the free Wi-Fi to play Pokemon Go. Are they still playing that? Oh, my God. You, you Go to Kakaako okay. on a Friday, Saturday, even a Tuesday night, and there yeah. people are, are everywhere. Like, you can't find a parking spot. It's crazy. They're still playing that thing. And there, there's kids, like 12, 30, there's little kids with their family are playing Pokemon Go, man. People love it. It's crazy. Yeah, well. So now you, um, 
you must have the largest free, I'm going to call it municipal Wi-Fi, because yeah. it, you know, even though you're not part of the city, you're, you yeah. must have the largest free municipal provided uh, Wi-Fi in the state. We do, uh, we do. So uh, one of our competitors um, provides a lot of free Wi-Fi hotspots, but they put a restriction. Right, okay. so 30 minutes, an hour, and if you're not our customer, you can't use it okay. anymore. And you know as well as I do. I mean, that, 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 that makes it difficult. Yeah, you're on there. You're a business person. You're on there going at it. Yeah, you're on there. So, uh, yeah, ours is just no restriction, and uh, we're trying to build as many many places as possible. And you know what? We're really a, a kind of a guerrilla-style urban uh, marketing-type enterprise, right, right? Right, So, I mean, we don't have the, the pockets to go up against these big guys. So, by building more free Wi-Fi, that's investing in our brand as a marketing expense too, and you're gonna like this, um, we have a mobile Wi-Fi truck. Oh, I didn't know that. So we took a, uh, <laughs> an existing boom That's truck so cool. and wrapped it up, you're Right. and uh, we, we, um, we go to events within our network, okay. extend the arm, and, uh, and grab free, uh, or grab internet off of our network, and we provide free Internet. Yeah. Mo Ely Ely Summerfest at the Blaisdale had the CrossFit games. Okay. All Gotta get to the UH football games, man. Oh, I know. That, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Great. That'd yeah. be awesome. We get, could do it. Yeah, get the, the get, you know, we need a, an incentive to get the students to come oh, to the games. I know. And, you know, that, and, and technology is one of the key ways. Yeah. Oh, we need to talk about that. Oh, that'd we can park that truck right in front and give free Wi Fi to everybody. And free Wi Fi for everybody. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we got a minute, but sure. I want you to just get, tell everybody you know, where they can get in touch with you. Your company, your website, those kinds of things, so they have you know, they have your contact. Sure, yeah, hawaiidt.com. So that's hawaiidt, like dialogicstelecom.com. Uh, yeah, send us, get on there, send yep. us emails, fill it out, all the information's there. You can even sign up for service and all of that, and, and we go, make and, it easy. And really go there. And then, um, I, I, don't, I don't normally ask this, but sure. investors? <laughs> well, <laughs> you've got so much money now, you don't need it. Well, right? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you always need more money, but um, yeah, we're we're in a really good situation. We we uh, uh, were able to uh, secure capital at the end of 2014, and the guy, um, the group, the guy, he's just been amazing. It's been great. Uh, so uh, fortunately for us, right now we're we're doing pretty good. Jared, you're you're you know, you're an excellent local story. You can make good in Hawaii without government assistance. I might add. Yes. Yeah, without government assistance, which I've been arguing for all along. Anyway, we burned up 30 minutes of, of time. Goes it's by fast. It's been a val very valuable show for me. I've learned quite a bit. So, but no um, guest goes unrewarded. So you're going to get. Uh, we have autographed solar cups. Okay. This is number 90 in the series. I'm in. So you're on their 90th show. So we'll sign this up right at the end of the show. Here. Okay. <laughs> but, I love um, it. And here's and just in case you didn't know what a solar cup was all about, here's all the different D marks. And how they're supposed to be used. So, uh, and you know what? I use every one of those. Yeah, so mine's, mine's the whatever. <laughs> Just fill it up and we'll go from there. Anyway, that's, uh, that's our show for today. And we have a little thing we always say at the end of every show. Okay. okay. One, two, three. How, how you, you doing? doing? <laughs>